Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler, and today we have Left Hand Fails, the Honey Badger. Um, just so you guys know, we'll kind of get, get through this real quick. The These are pretty much the same style knife. The only difference is, is the blade. Uh, this we got the sheep's footy style blade, and in this style we got the drop point. Other than that, they are about the same. They are both a medium of all three. Uh, I believe they have three different sizes. There is a small, medium, and large. And I just decided to try out the medium just to kind of get us rolling here and uh, take it off. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to move this out of the way. And let's jump into some specifications. And we'll kind of take it you know, from there, I guess. Not really kind of take it. That's where we're going to freaking go. So, first and foremost, let's check the weight on these two. All right, so we can see that just fine. This is the sheep's footy style, so it is a 2.91. And this is the drop point, and it is a 2.8, wow, okay, 2.86 ounces. So they are both very similar. As you can tell, like I said, they are pretty much the same and I, I'm left hand special. But they're pretty much both the same exact knife with a different style blade. Um, I, honestly, I did not know that when I was buying them. I kind of thought that they were uh, two different complete knives. It's kind of cool to have two of the same, but unfortunately you're only getting one review out of it, so we'll take it for that. So next, we're gonna jump into the thickness of the blade stock here. Coming in at 130 thousandths on the uh, sheep's foot style blade and 130 thousandths on the other. That's kind of what you expect. I expect these to be very similar in most of these specifications. This one behind the edge is coming in at approximately 20 thousandths. Let's check the sheep's foot. 20 thousandths and 20 thousandths. The width. Coming in right at half an inch. We would assume the same. <sighs> All right. Tyler's freaking measuring skills is re All right. right at half an inch. We made it work. That's what, that's what you do with that. You make it work until it does what you want it to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm measuring it from the dead center, the widest point of it. So it is half an inch there. Uh, let's go with the overall height while it's in your pocket. Excluding the flipper tab, I don't really care to measure that. So the overall height of this knife is coming in at about 1.26, which seems a little tall to me, but I want to say the PM2 comes in at about 1 inch, 1.4 inches. The sheep's foot's coming in at 1.34, and just for a sanity check so I'm not freaking crazy, I was completely and utterly wrong. These are coming in at 1.5, almost a little, 1.6 inches for the PM2, just to give it a little perspective there. Last but not least, let's take these guys and let us measure. Let's move them here. Don't touch it. All right. So these aren't the longest of knives, which is nice. They're coming in at about seven and a quarter with a blade length coming in at right about three and a quarter and a sharpened, or I'm sorry, a, yeah, so three and a quarter for the blade length and your sharpened edge is coming in at about two and three quarters just because of that large finger choil there. Overall length on this is approximately the same, about seven and a quarter plus or minus. The overall length is looking like three and a half and the sharpened blade length is coming in at about two and seven eighths of an inch. Yeah, okay. Three and a quarter, three and a half. Um, all righty. So there's some specifications for you guys. Now I'm gonna jump into the size comparisons and then I'm just gonna kind of freeform talk at the end about these two. Talk about my experience in the carry and everything like that. So the first comparison knives, excuse me if anybody heard that. The first comparison knives that we currently have are the PM2 and the Spyderco Astute. So as you can see here, let's sandwich 
these two. I've never reviewed two knives at a time and it actually causes a little bit of logistical situations. PM2 coming in and obviously much longer. The Spyderco Astute actually coming in at surprisingly almost the exact same length we can see here. Um, my hand is touching the bolt that's coming in at a straight line and we are missing the blade by about a quarter of an inch on that side. So, As I say always, I do do a lot of comparison knives for no other reason other than the fact that somebody out there probably hasn't touched all of these knives and it's something that you can use in a way to, you know, if you've only held the feldspar, if you've only held the PM2, if you've only held the rad or whatever, you know, hopefully one of these is something that you're like, okay, I get it. So here's the large feldspar and the mini feldspar. Um, mini feldspar is coming in at right about the same exact length as these, and the large feldspar is obviously probably almost an inch longer than the two of them. If the mini is the same, obviously the large feldspar is going to be larger because that's what common sense dictates, jackass. Um, so here we go with the Rat Model 1 and the Rat Model 2s. Obviously the Rat Model 2 is coming in right at the right length. I mean, the, the, ironically I purchased all of these at the same time. I wanted the Rat Model 2 for the comparisons. I wanted the Spyderco Astute because it was relatively new. And they are all the same exact length blades, which is kind of cool to have come in all at once. So it's the exact same size as the Rat Model 2, much smaller than the at model one. So there's your Civivi Dogma and your Civivi Darus. So the Darus coming in actually at a much more stubby, stubby round right here. If you guys can see, it's about half an inch, about shorter right there. So we got like that. Blades tip to tip. The Dogma coming in at uh, about an eighth, maybe a quarter of an inch longer, not much longer, but the Dogma feels like a bigger blade, but you know, it's whatever, take that for what you will. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to pick this guy up and we're going to talk about it. So these are some FRN scales. Um, these scales are, uh, I mean, they, they feel kind of cheap, but that's my opinion of FRN. Now, cheap doesn't necessarily mean bad, but in this case, you know, it, it just kind of feels like uh, somebody used it and I hate to steal it, but so, I don't remember who it was. It feels like a toy. Right? It kind of feels like a toy in your hands. That being said, once you get past that, you know, the grip on these is pretty darn good. I can definitely feel that pocket clip down here pushing up against there. And it's probably because the way it's protruding from there. But this is a decent grip. I, uh, I, I really actually like this grip right here. Same thing with this guy. Actually, this feels better in hand when it's not... Uh, when we're not talking about choked up position. Now the choked up position here feels great. Um, there's something about smaller knives and the choked up position with a good finger choil is just fantastic. This finger choil feels much smaller, and I can't even, yeah, you can see here. It's a much smaller finger choil by comparison. And by much, I don't mean crazy amounts, but it's enough to notice when it's in your hand. So I love this sheep's foot style blade. I love the functionality of a sheep's foot style blade. And the choke up position feels good, but I'm really brushed right up against here. So anybody with a little bit more sausage fingers, they might, they might not want to choke up so much because it's gonna kind of start hitting into that blade length on the sheep's foot style. Now on the drop point, I mean, Anybody can do this. Anybody can choke up and it feels great. So, uh, that, you know, up here, I actually, I wanted to like this one more because of the blade shape, but the ergonomics on this just do feel, they do feel better. So we talked about the FRN scales. This is a deep carry pocket clip and actually it's, it's a much more deep carry pocket clip than most because the way it's mounted is it's mounted um, underneath the scales. So in order to take this guy off, I'm not sure if I can, I haven't done it yet, but I might be able to take the two screws out and slide that out, or I might have to take off the whole scale. I, I would have to imagine that I could slide it out once I take those screws out. It is ampidextrous, as you can tell right here, so you can mount that clip on either side. 
Uh, the cool thing is, is the screws are relatively recessed, not nothing crazy, but they got a button head screw, so it's going to stick out a tiny bit. They're not flat. But because of this pocket clip going underneath the scales, there's not much recess needed. So that's, that's a good thing. And both of these pocket clips are the exact same. Uh, we have a G, not a G10, probably an FRN backspacer on both. Um, not too bad. The fit and finish on these guys, we have actually recessed liners, which is pretty cool. Um, you can see that on both of those. They are recessed inside of that FRN. There is some jimping on the liner lock. Both of these are locking up at, I don't know, 30, 40%, which is pretty darn good. They both have some jimping on the back. One has a slight thumb ramp with the sheep's foot. The other one does not, but it still has jimping. This one, it, weirdly enough, <laughs> they decided to jimp inside of this finger choil, and I don't hate it. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's the first time I've really paid attention or felt that before, but there's no jimping on here. And um, I don't know. I really don't feel the jimping with that part of the hand. It's weird. Yeah, okay. So one of these sides appears to be just a dot in the center of the pivot, almost to make it look symmetrical with the other one. So the pivot is a T8. Sorry for that dumbfounded nonsense. The pivot is a T8, and the uh, body screws and everything else are T6. Let's jump into these different blades. So this is an 8CR13 MOV. And as a quick reference for you guys, uh, you know, we all hear these names and, you know, the M390, blah, 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 blah. One thing I've learned from the aluminum industry is a lot of the names coincide with exactly what the chemical composition is or the key elements of the chemical composition. So without boring you guys with a ton of details, 8CR13 MOV basically states that it is a 0.8 chrome, or I'm sorry, 0.8 carbon content, plus or minus. Now it really ranges from say a 0.75 to a 0.85. They, they, they give a slight range. Um, I don't know, I can't remember that, there we go. Uh, the, thir the CR13 obviously is 13% chromium. Now, when, you're, when you think about 13% chromium, the cutoff is yeah, 14, I'll do some more research on that, but you know, typically we go by the 14% chrome makes a stainless steel. Well, I don't know which one is it. You guys probably can't see it, but one, of, it was so weird that there's little dots on here all over, and it's starting to freaking patina already. I've only been using this for about a weekish, eh, a little bit over a week. Um, and the only thing that I could think that might have been stupid on my part is I did cut a freaking pickle with this. Yeah, should have cut it with this. But I cut a freaking pickle with this, and I must not have cleaned it off enough because it is, I mean, it's, I, I can just take a quick, you know, uh, something slightly rough and get that off of there and nobody would ever know. But I noticed it as I was carrying it. I'm like, what the hell? 8CR is supposed to be relatively, you know, uh, uh, stainless. But unfortunately, it's not like the M390, which has a ton of chromium in it, or, or things of that nature, right? That the super high end or 9CR18 MOV, which has that 18% chromium and the 0.85 to 0.95 carbon, um, it's it's not going to resist rusting like that. So when you cut a pickle, which is super salty, I should have expected that. Again, not a huge deal. All right, so how's the action on these guys? The action is just fine. Um, they are running on bearings, uh, for the sake of it. They are running on bearings. Um, they are both damn good action, and before we do this, these did both come very much centered. Um, there we go. These both did come very much centered. Let's jump into, just so you guys can see the guts real quick. Um, they both have a... Uh, thumb hole or a spidey flick hole which is very very functional it is something that that you definitely can use and 
is it as comfortable as the perfect circle that Spyderco provides us with? No. Um, it is definitely not. It is, it is nowhere near as comfortable as that to flip. Yeah, they're running on steel uh, bearings, it looks like. Steel ball bearings. So if you guys want to see that there. Um, so the Spidey Flick's not a problem here. They actually have pretty sweet action. I hated this flipper tab out of the box. I picked this up and I'm like, this thing is the stupidest freaking flipper tab. It's so tiny. But then like after you get, it's just a different way to do it just with the design. I end up putting more of a tip down. And I don't need to show you guys how to flip it, but it was something that it's not your normal flipper tab style to where you want to just start. Yeah. So ergonomics, great. The, the fidget factor, it's there. You know, price, I believe these are approximately $30 plus or minus. I believe I got them on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, T8 pivot, everything else is a T6. Deep carry pocket clip, ampidextrous, 8CR13 MOV, which does a pair to patina within a week. Womp womp. And uh, some FRN scales that are grippy enough, you know, they're they're just like a like a honeycomb style scale. Go figure, honey badger. You know, got the honey badger logo, which is dirty as shit. Yeah, actually a really cool honey badger logo right there. So overall thoughts on these knives? I think they're great for the price. Um, they feel like a knife. There's there's without going too philosophical on it, there's certain knives that you pick up for 40 bucks or 60 bucks that you're like, man, this is nice. I don't want to take this anywhere because it just doesn't feel like a user, right? It feels kind of like a piece rather than like a tool. Um, these feel like tools. Uh, you, you can take these out and, and you do not hesitate to use the living crap out of these. And, and that is kind of what you want, especially like, again, if you work in a mill or something like that, it's a cool knife to just be like, Pop. all right, we're good. Um, you don't really care what happens because of 30 bucks. But on the same same token, the action's great. You know, the ergonomics are pretty damn good. They are super light, 2.9 or whatever. Um, after carrying these for a week, my honest opinion, especially of the Honey Badger medium size, both drop point and sheep's foot style blades, I put these up as a contender for a budget version of the bug out. Um, shoot me, castrate me, whatever you want. Castrate me, I'm going to come after you. That'll be a freaking problem. But, um, you know, it, and these remind me of the bug out with the FRN, you know, the kind of the cheaper feel. Uh, they don't flex, but they also have liners that are recessed on the inside. And there is some milling on these liners. I didn't mention that before, but you got a little bit of milling on the inside, which is nice for a $30 knife especially. Um, but these, these to me feel like they were meant to compete on a budget level with the bug out, um, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have mine readily available. You, you don't really need it. it. It's it's generically the same size as this, and it's it does weigh about an ounce less, and it is much sleeker. But that being said, this is a pretty lightweight knife. It's a pretty user friendly knife. Um, the feel in your hand feels like the bug out. So, uh, yeah. That's about all I have to say about these guys. Um, this is the Honey Badger, both the Warncliffe style and the Drop Point Blades. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You know, it, it's it's kind of been a wild ride when it when it comes to it. It blew up so much, and I got so much feedback so quick that we're trying to intake it all and put it all together. So uh, bear with me. Keep giving me feedback. Um, you guys can find my email throughout the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been. Every day, I always say this has been Tyler, like I'm a past tense guy. That actually is a terrifying statement, like somebody's just going to walk through the door and bam. But, uh, so, my name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay sharp, stay safe, wear your friggin' masks. Have a great friggin' day.